That's scary. It's like it's like giving your ex your checkbook with all and a signature and a signature stamp. You know, it's like okay. Next slide. By virtue of the authority vested in me as the chairman of the Mars Jupiter 12 committee and ultra, <clears throat> ultra secret committee established by President Truman with full consent and permanent voting members of the Mars Jupiter 12 committee, this presidential order by proxy is established as follows. Now, I, I'm not going to get in debate with anybody about what Majestic 12 stands for. This Mars Jupiter was on the document. And I know a lot of people think it stands for a lot of other things. And uh, I've been hearing, I, I'm not a UFO person. <laughs> I was a technology person. I haven't read a lot of these books, but I heard there's a, um, is it Sitchin that discuss the uh, 12th planet? So I'm, I believe these documents are real. Whether or not you believe them, is, you know, it's your right. But uh, Mars Jupiter 12 has never been used in with, Majestic 12 or MJ 12. So I wanted to clarify that this is definitely different. I know it. You know it. And for those that think I might have mistyped something wrong, that's the way I got it. Charter. This is pretty scary stuff. There is hereby established a strategic group of key government personnel called the Mars Jupiter 12 Committee, referred to as MJ 12, with the authority to take any action to the maximum extent possible in relation to foreign or alien data, materials, information, technology, artifacts, and extraterrestrial biological entities, all hereafter referred to as foreign artifacts, which may bear upon the national security of the United States of America. Amendments to this charter and foreign artifacts, materials, and information shall be classified to the highest levels available to the U.S. government. The MJ-12 committee's actions and directives will be referred to as a program outside the MJ-12 membership. The MJ-12 committee shall have sole United States governmental authority to direct each FA aspect, foreign artifact, or substance, and to make sure that each foreign artifact, <coughs> make such foreign artifact available to the president or the members of the MJ-12 committee. Next slide. The several departments and agency of the government and Department of Defense as identified by the MJ-12 committee shall be notified by the by department directive to consider any foreign artifact is highly classified and alert DOD foreign technology division immediately upon occasion of any incidents, happenstance, or encounter with foreign artifact. We now know what a foreign artifact is. We've seen a few of them. Uh, next slide. Next slide. The, uh, before somebody really good at researching discovers, stop there, discovers the uh, date on the, uh, go back one? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Before somebody just, <coughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to deviate from this just a second. I'm going to clarify something. Certain dates and names were left out of these documents. I personally fill them in. Brad and I talked about who was most likely the person we did our best guess. But before somebody really good at research discovers that February 22nd is my birth date, I'm going to tell you it is. The year was the in there, but not the date. So I put the February 22nd in. It's cool. It's George Washington's birthday. Now, the original MJ-12 documents presented by Brad Steiger, uh, Stanton Friedman, and uh, Shandera, I think I'm getting the name wrong, but referred to an attachment D, or autopsy report. Next page, uh, next slide. These are just dates and names that are very similar to the original MJ-12 document. Next The purpose of this preliminary postmortem examination is to determine the cause and manner of death, the origin of the entities, and the type of biological life form. Uh, we're not going to get to the meat if we don't move through this general stuff. Next one. 
This basically talks about unidentified debris, where it was crashed, who was there. Next slide. <clears throat> now, what you have to remember is I received and copyrighted this information prior to 1994. This is before Corso ever wrote his first draft. It was before the alien autopsy film was known about even by Tim Shawcroft, who I just did a video interview with last night, and they were the first to publish the alien autopsy. All this was copyrighted before anybody knew anything about things that have come since. And this is another thing that validates these documents, at least for me. One is the fact that they discussed that all the bodies were identical. And trust me, when a military says identical, we're talking identical. I'm not going to read the details because there's some highlights I want to get into. Next slide. You're talking about uh, the covers. Don't go back, but on the previous page, at the end, it said uh, a dark, coarsely textured, flat, black, seamless, almond-shaped apparatus covers each eye with no apparent attachment points. For a lack of better description, eyeglasses or sunglasses come to mind. Perhaps their apparatus is an aid in distance viewing, blocking harmful solar, solar radiation, enhanced spectrum detection, low light or infrared vision, or some other unknown use. Again, I'll we'll make a point of this. Before Corso wrote about seeing these funny lenses, before the alien autopsy, the y'all have seen it, remember I'm peeling off these little black lenses for everybody that says aliens have black eyes. Well, we, these guys have been hanging around Hollywood because they're wearing shades. Okay? These, they are not their natural eyes. They have some type of lens. All this was copyrighted prior to 1994. We have documentation. We can prove it to anybody just like I did the Brits. When they asked me if I could prove I did all the jobs, I said I brought 200 documents. And it's all going to be on their film, by the way. So that, to me, it's just, it's just extremely fascinating to know that you know, I got all the document. I didn't even know what MJ-12 was, by the way, when I got these documents. Color me stupid. I just didn't know. Uh, the other point, <clears throat> other than eyes, uh, this this has never been discussed. I, it's, it's a shame we can't talk to the government people that uh, did the alien autopsy so they could spread a little di disinformation. It says, tiny lines run horizontally from head to foot, much like record grooves, but smaller, and are only discernible through a magnifying glass or microscope. Uh, to me, the only reason you'd have something like that is if this thing was a manufactured being, which would also explain why they're identical, and for energy absorption of wide spectrum. And the other thing that, uh, since this, we can prove this was copyrighted long before this other stuff, it says at the bottom, one large geo-organ is present. How many of y'all remember on the cadaver of the alien on the alien autopsy and they open it up and there was one kind of round organ in the middle that just looked like, you know, one of those stupid donut tires they put in your trunk that never work. <laughs> so, I mean, here again you have my, my belief from my sources and documents that we copyrighted that the alien autopsy was done under the direction of the government. And it was done as close as possible to the real thing. Because the best lie is always the lie that's closest to the truth. What would convince you more, I mean, if they'd had a triangular shaped being with 12 legs, and it's supposedly the real autopsy, or one that was identical to the real autopsy, except it had an extra finger. To me, the one with the extra finger would confuse people far more than a better looking film of something really bizarre. By the way, psychological operations is an industry in the military. And there are thousands of people that work in it, and they're good at it. So I'm going to take questions, and you can put up the next slide for them to look at, because they won't look at me anymore. Um, how much time do I have, or am I out? Okay. I promised you... If you want to ask a question. Questions, yeah. please.
Um, yeah, but. Okay, two questions I have. Number one, you are going to discuss reverse engineering on alien materials. Are you going to get into that? Please. I, okay, I have eight minutes, but here, okay. I'll tell you what I know. Uh, Gerald said that uh, the guy that worked for him as a national security investigator was at Groom when they tested the accelerator of the TR-3B the first time. And uh, it just it's probably one of the more fascinating stories I've ever heard in my life. They said they strapped down this 200-foot accelerator. He, he was explaining it. He says, imagine a really fat hula hoop with big weights around it where the superconductive magnets. They bolted this thing down with bolts that were two feet across into concrete. The chain links were six feet. I mean, if you can imagine a chain link out of steel. They bolted this thing down. He said <laughs> he couldn't believe it. It was just like the Manhattan Project. They didn't know if this thing was going to burn a hole through the earth set off a chain reaction in the atmosphere, or take out everybody in northern and central Nevada. <laughs> they turned this thing on, and they've got, I mean, dozens of cameras, people hidden around places where they could watch the cameras, and they held their breath, and nothing happened. Nothing. $20 billion to develop the accelerator from 1965. And, and I know a guy that worked at General Dynamics when they, and, and they might have been doing it before that, but I can track it back as, as far as 1965. You know, that much time, that much money, it did nothing. However, they figured out after a while, I guess somebody must have walked up to it like, you know, an old, uh, a car that won't start and kicks the tire. They figured out the thing was 89% of the mass and weight was reduced. So what do you do when you have a flying saucer that you tried to build? It's kind of like the Indians if we drove up a you know, a Model T back in the American Indians and say, hey, you can build all these you want. And they go, thanks a lot. <laughs> but we built this accelerator trying to emulate saucer-like technology. And we only achieved part of its effect. So what do you do when you have a circle that's real light and you can put a lot of stuff in it without adding weight to it? How do you propel it? There's only one way. You hang a triangle on it and you put three engines, conventional multi-mode rocket engines. Of course, they're very advanced. And you fly this circle around with the crew and reconnaissance and cameras and everything else in it. Uh, that's, just, that's just one of the things that I hope to explain to you good people is there is a flying triangle, but it's ours. Mm -hmm. The flying triangles are not theirs. Aliens don't transverse the universe or come from another dimension and take the time to redesign their technology that they've had for eons. We have redesigned their technology, and we can't get it to work right. So we put a triangle on it. It's just very simple. On the Aurora, which you have now explained as a project, not a thing, one of the vehicles is reputed to be a diamond-shaped object that comes in over the West Coast in excess of 4,000 miles an hour. Do you know anything about that particular vehicle? I've heard rumors, but I don't have anybody I trust that's told me uh, anything about it that I could discuss it. But you have, to, you have to understand that as far back as late in Vietnam War, we could make a radar signature on any radar in the world, see anything they wanted with electronic countermeasures and ECCM, which is counter countermeasures. We now have stealth coatings that can put any type of camouflage for visual observation on the aircraft. 